seed oils are toxic, seed oils are going to kill you. It's absolute nonsense. Um, and so I'm glad I've got an opportunity to set the record straight. There's a number of different arguments they use. There's three key arguments that people use as a rationale for saying seed oils are toxic. And I'd love to work through each of these because I think it's important for listeners to be able to uh, understand why this information is misinformation that they're, they're reading. And so very briefly, one of them is that um, they use as an example an association of this increase in seed oil with increase in all of these different health issues that we're having now. And we can dive into this after. The other reason they use is that it creates an unfavorable omega-6 to omega-3 ratio causing inflammation. And again, we can do a deeper dive into this. The third argument they use is, oh, it's unnatural. It's gone through all this refinement process. You know, it's bleached. My God, it's going to kill us because of this process. And then the fourth is that it's prone to oxidation, i.e. these seed oils when they're heated are prone to oxidation. And so what perhaps we could do is work through each of those um, and debunk each of those four myths. Let's do it, Sarah. I like to see you get so excited. <laughs> so you've been studying this for, what, 25 years? You've been interested in sort of how fats interact with our body and our health. Is that right? Yeah, 25 years. You're spot on, actually. A lot of my trials um, are looking at all types of fats, so not just seed oils, but I have done some work, for example, looking at cooking with seed oils, and we can come on to that. Can we start at the beginning? You said, I think you were starting with this suggestion that basically people are, what you said before, that overall we're all eating vastly more yep. seed oil yep. than we were in the past, and we know that we are seeing an explosion of health issues, right? Yep. Whether that's living with obesity or diabetes or just this whole host, right, of, of, of health issues. Yeah, so one of the first things that people claiming seed oils to be toxic use is beautiful infographics, beautiful figures that show, you know, a, a nice chart where you see um, on one axis of this figure increase in seed oil intake and on the other axis you see increase in cardiovascular disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes. You know, think of all of these chronic related diseases that are increasing over the last 50 years. And you see this almost linear relationship, as we see, as we call it. So as your intake of seed oil increases, so does the level of all of these different diseases over the years. So that sounds increase. pretty bad. Yes, it does. But that's association. It doesn't mean causation. And what is really alarming here is that it's ignoring everything else that's happening over the last 50 years. The fact that actually these seed oils are typically... Uh, now eaten as part of these very heavily processed unhealthy foods. So actually the majority of the, our intake of seed oils comes from uh, these cereal-based uh, foods, so pastries from cakes and, and these kind of foods. And so it's not the seed oils themselves that are causing this, it's the ingredients, that all of the other ingredients in these foods, but also what else has been happening over the last 50 years. So, you know, our increase in um, being sedentary, so not, um, you know, lack of physical activity, our increase in stress, our increase in sleep problems, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all of these other issues. So just because in the same time frame that seed oils are increasing, these other diseases are increasing, doesn't mean one causes the other. And so I know that often... In science, the way that nutritional scientists try to unpick this is this thing called epidemiology, yep. right? Where you study, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people over decades, and you look at what they've recorded they've eaten, and you see the difference. And I know that we've seen that, you know, for many foods, there is a really strong link between eating yep. more of those foods and worse health outcomes, because you and others talk to me about this all the time. You don't see that link with the seed oils? So if you adjust for all of these other confounders that I've just mentioned, no, you don't. What you see is consistently there is a favorable effect from increasing omega-6, which is a good marker of seed oil intake, with a reduction in coronary heart disease. We know that omega-6, which is this polyunsaturated fatty acid, so one of the main uh, uh, fatty acids in these seed oils, we know that it reduces our bad cholesterol. It has a very potent effect in reducing our bad cholesterol, which we call our LDL cholesterol. You're saying that what the science is showing is that if you have more of this omega-6 inside you, which you said Correct. was one of the monoons? So omega-6 is one of the polyunsaturated fatty acids. There's two types of polyunsaturated fatty acids that we eat. 
one is called omega-6 and one is called omega-3. And omega-6 is found in particularly high amounts in most seed oils, particularly sunflower oil, like I said earlier. Um, and it is also found in quite high amounts in these other oils like soybean um, and canola oil. So it's the main polyunsaturated fatty acid that's in these oils. What we see is that an increase in omega-6 intake from these population epidemiological studies is actually associated with favorable effects on all-cause mortality. So I know you like, we refer to that as, you know, how likely is people are going to die. It's associated with huge reductions in LDL cholesterol, our bad cholesterol, and it's associated with reductions in cardiovascular disease. And it's this omega-6 level that's often used as an argument to why seed oils are bad and why you get this association. There's a study that's often referred to as well. It's called the Sydney Heart Study. And this is a key study that people use as a way of saying, actually, even in a randomized control trial, that um, seed oils are bad for us. And this is a study that was conducted quite some time ago, back in the 1960s. And this is where they asked men who had already um, had some sort of cardiovascular event to increase the amount of omega-6 through seed oils in their diet. Um, and what they found was that there was an increased risk in those people who increased their seed oil intake. However, a really important caveat here is that a large proportion of the seed oil that they ate was in margarine spreads, which back in the 1960s was in the form of trans fatty acids, which we've done a previous podcast on, which we know, yes, are bad for us if they're industrially produced. They're not bad for us now because we're not eating them now. And so it was heavily confounded. And this study is used a lot to say, okay, well, the Sydney Heart Study shows you eat seed oils and it's worse for your health. And what you're saying is it actually tells you that if you eat trans fats, it's bad for you. Yes. And it's a 60-year-old study. What do all the more recent studies say about, um, about this omega-6 you're talking about? Is it bad for you? So all the recent studies, the epidemiological research shows that as you increase your polyunsaturated fat intake, you reduce your risk of ill health from cardiovascular disease and so forth. There's also many, many randomized control trials that show that if you increase your polyunsaturated fatty acid in, 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 intake, you reduce your LDL cholesterol significantly, and it results in a 32% reduction in cardiovascular disease. So you're saying that actually if you have more of this omega-6, yep. you reduce your risk of things like heart attacks yep. by So much? up to, some of the data shows up to about 30%. Now, wow. obviously, it depends on the length of exposure, i.e. it's not going to happen overnight. But the evidence, apart from this one study, which we know is flawed, the overall um, totality of the evidence is that omega-6 is beneficial for health. I do need to caveat that, Jonathan, though, that there are um, a very small proportion of the population that have a particular genetic variant that means that they are susceptible to high intakes of omega-6. And it's always important to say, look, I'm talking about averages here. Everyone responds differently. But overall, the majority of people will actually benefit from increasing their polyunsaturated fatty acid intake. At Zoe, we know small changes can create big results. Subscribing to this channel is one such change. It helps us reach more people and lets us bring you more of the latest science on health and nutrition. So if this video has given you something useful, subscribing is the easiest way for you to give us a little back.